Hello everyone, Darren here, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Now, in the last episode, I focused entirely on getting the final stages of my aluminum factory up and running. Adding the final machines, the logistics, crossing my fingers, and then powering it all on. And to my surprise, it worked. And to great success, we're now at about 80% of the full potential throughput of the factory, and I'm working behind the scenes to kind of dress it up, add some architecture, make it look a little cleaner, a little nicer, and then, of course, apply those Mark V belts that we just unlocked in the previous episode to all of the logistics that need it to make everything run a little bit more smoothly. Now today, all of that hard work is going to start to pay off. Now with aluminum casing and Alclad sheets in abundance, we can start to unlock the next set of milestones, which includes the hover pack, the hazmat suit, and the coveted drones. So on the right-hand side of the screen, we have our to-do list. The first thing we're going to do is do a little quick factory walkthrough just to show you what I've been doing behind the scenes. Then we're going to get straight to it with the milestones, the hover pack, the hazmat suit, the drones, and then take the drones out for a spin and see how they work. Because I've actually never used them before. I know they use batteries, and I have no idea how we actually make batteries, but we actually picked some up a while ago at a hard drive site, crash site. So we've got a few batteries already. Hopefully it's enough to just do a few test flights and see how much these things carry and things. Uh, I'm guessing some of you know this already, but I just don't. I never look ahead, so tier 7 and tier 8 is completely foreign to me. Uh, apart from the hover pack, I've never played with it, but I've obviously seen that a lot in videos. Most YouTubers who cover this game, always flying around. Alright, let's check out the quartz refinement room. We did this in the previous episode. Effectively, what we've got is two floors, broken into four groups, 68 machines, A, B, C, and D, all taking in quartz and pumping out silica. And we can see a kind of a diagram, if you will, of what's going on here, but the red ones are indicating the machines that are currently powered off. I was going for a bit of a checkerboard look to it, but then I actually powered some of them back on, which is why it's a weird random assortment of which ones are on and off. Um, effectively, what we're doing, though, is a current output of 487.5 silica out of each group. So the target is to get to 625. The reason we're not at the target is because we need 1,500 raw quartz to be fed into this factory per minute. So it's a lot. We're currently bringing in 1,200 by a rail. So we're just a little shy. We need another quartz deposit and then probably a little extra to take into account the time that's going to take to get here. Uh, the same is true of bauxite. We also need 1,500 bauxite and we currently have 1,200. So we're roughly at about 80%. Um, okay, so let's just check out upstairs. Basically, we've seen this before. I've gone for a very clean white and black kind of look to things. Um, all our machines are numbered and they have their various rates on them if they're overclocked or underclocked or if they're just if they're off I was gonna go around them and put 0% on everything the ones that were off But I just figured it takes way too long to do that. In fact, this should just say hundred again The machines off we can see it by the yellow light. That's there I wish it would turn red when you switch the machine off, but it's just gonna be yellow Anyways, that's what this helpful diagram is for so I know hey is no what's wrong with number 54? Oh, it's off, you know, no problems all right, anyway, so we can see our belts flooding silica out into the foundries area. There's a reason that this one's a bit more choppy than the other one. Don't worry about it. it take me way too long to explain why, but I do know why it's like that. Anyway, so we have foundries D, foundries C. That's where these belts go, so we'll just head out, follow along the belts. I decided to keep the belts low down instead of hanging them from the ceiling because I like to actually see what's on them uh, in case there is an issue. And that way it makes troubleshooting a lot easier. So I went with the reinforced windows here. I thought it'd be kind of cool for the lower levels of the foundries to have reinforced windows and that way there's a floor up above them right so that's why I was like well these ones would need to be reinforced they can't be regular frame windows if they're gonna be holding like a whole floor right next to them right above them that was kind of the idea I also just think it kind of looks cool for all the smoke and stuff so we'll just go through into the foundry room I've also put windowed or glass floors in wherever I need to see belts if there's belts underneath me I think it makes sense to use glass flooring otherwise just use railing and that way we can see what's flooding. By the way, this is the reason that we have a bit of choppiness with some of the belts is because we're not making enough scrap. There's also another reason for that, which we can get into later. Well, ultimately it's all down to the fact that we don't produce enough bauxite. Uh, anyway, so we've got a similar sort of diagram down here, A, B, C, and D, listing all of our machines, their current output and the target I'm working towards, which is 500. Currently have 420 coming out with two machines powered down in each group. So pretty straightforward. If you want to go into each group and inspect them, we have a little rail that will take us there, a little stairwell and rail. So we can go into D group or C group, just move along them this way. And then we can run down and go like, okay, what's up with this machine? It's at 88% right now. What about this one? 100%. What about this one? 100%. And so on and so forth. So we can see they've got loads of scrap, lots of silica. Same with these guys, actually. So they're all doing pretty much fine. 
bottom floor is actually lacking a bit. I think it's C group that has the biggest problem. No, maybe B. Well, maybe A. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> this one is the opposite problem where it can't, can't churn out the stuff quickly enough on this belt. All right, so back down to the main facility. Out we go, and then we've got the storage area, which isn't done yet. I'm currently sinking uh, as much as I can, but the awesome sink itself is even getting backed up. Well, kind of backed up. The Oh, let me just show you. There's 9,600 casing in here, here, and here. And that's basically because we're producing more than 780 per minute. So these are filled up, and that one belt that's going in here has backed up. That's, of course, solvable if we just built another one with this second belt up here. Uh, this is backed up, actually, just on purpose. I've got that turned off so I can store up some Alclad because it emptied out completely. So now I just want to store some up. And, you know, we'll do something with this in future and make a proper storage area and a proper recycling area for multiple goods in case anything else gets backed up, like scrap, for instance. Uh, but for now, all good. The assembly room is quite clean, quite like the look of this place. Uh, we have nine machines on this side and nine on the opposite side. These are doing the casing and the others are doing the Alclad, I think. And if we check them out, we can see how they're doing. 125 casing per minute. That's full up, no problems there. How about this one? It seemed to just have a bit of a stutter a second ago, 76%. They're a bit low on aluminum ingots coming from one of those groups. Whatever, none of the rates really matter right now until we get this place the required input. And then once the quartz and the bauxite are being delivered properly, then if we've got problems, then we can actually figure out what's going wrong. Um, but from my inspections, there shouldn't really be anything going wrong. And I made sure all the elevators are correct, all the lifts are correct, so yeah. All right, let's keep moving down. So basically, this room looks the exact same on the other side. It'd be nice to have either a bridge or some sort of gap between the machines or something so I can walk to the other side from the room. Currently, I have to leave the room if I want to do that. Um, so yeah. Anyway, so I just call this room assembly because it just has assemblers in them. So they're doing two different things. And I might do the same for the refinery room. There's going to be two sets of refinery machines. These ones are making scrap, whereas those ones are making aluminum solution. Um, so I'll have a, a room called Refinement, I guess. Uh, we can see which ones feed into which group. So this is D group, and they share C and D group with that one, and so on and so forth. If we just hopped over to one of these machines, see what's wrong with this one. It's powered down right now. It looks like it's because it's just backed up with aluminum scrap. It can't actually churn out as much as it would like to. Water is getting dispersed just fine. So the reason that scrap is getting backed up too much here is because... Uh, some of the foundries are offline, so obviously some of these numbers are going to go down and get lower. So that's main, the main reason for that. Uh, then we've got our refineries doing solution. Solution should be backed up. Yep, it's backed up because of course we're not at the full throughput just yet. And we have extra petroleum coke flooded in. I've changed the train route, actually. And before I head back over there, I actually need to pick up some casing. I've changed the train route so that it actually hits the bauxite and quartz area like three times for every one time it hits the oil processing plant to pick up its um, petroleum coke because we don't need as much coke as we need for the other things. So that one train is doing much better now that I kind of divided it. All right, there we go. All right, let's get the hell out of here. We're just going to take... The, that's pretty much everything I've done. I haven't done anything else with the... It's obviously not done yet. I haven't taken the copper area into account and it built it up yet. This is probably going to be a storage area for sending things out of this factory because obviously we have these train port holes here. Um, to send out outputs, but we don't have anything hooked up to it yet. So until we get this place up running 100% smoothly, I don't really plan on doing that. And then this area, like we said before, it may change because we don't have enough copper to get it to where it needs to be. So eventually I might make this part of the refinery room and build refineries to make pure copper because um, you can make much more out of the same amount of ore. So we'll do that in the future. All right, that's basically it. So hope people like the kind of designs I've gone for. I decided to add that little walkway because I just think it breaks up the, um, the concrete a little bit. And we've got the metal bar trims on each of these things, which I think also look quite good. And all the rooms are just big glass rooms, basically, we can see into. All right, let's get out of here. So this still isn't actually powered on. We'll just get our train or our locomotive. And I'm going to go up to the bauxite area really quickly. Because something I didn't just show is that I added on the... Uh, a few different comments and people said, but it's something actually I kind of noticed anyway, which is as trains are loading and unloading, the belts feeding out and into them stop. Uh, into the freight ca cargo containers, right? So they just completely pause. So your transfer rate sort of slows down. So you need to build sort of buffers in order to just keep some storage there. And that way, 
things can keep moving. So I did that with the quartz area. So there's, there's storage containers in the quartz area handling a buffer so that even when trains arrive and stop, it doesn't change. The, the machine belts don't empty out. I'm explaining this horribly, but you know what I mean, I'm sure. So anyway, I just thought I'd show it up here. I did the same thing. So I've changed around the box site just a little bit to just add in the fact that we now have buffer storage containers. It's something I'm gonna have to do a little bit better with the quartz. Actually, we can just leave this train parked just up ahead because we're gonna be taking it out of here in a second. So quartz, in order to get the volume of quartz I needed, I still haven't tapped any extra miners, but I did add two more trucks to this route. So now there's three trucks on the exact same route, just coming up, delivering quartz constantly into here. And then we've got two Mark V belts dividing it up into each container. So it's 780 per minute, just feeding into this container, which is more than enough. It's obviously getting backed up right now because we don't have all the machines online. But if we do, then we'll need two trains, I think, in total to be in constant rotation, you know, fielding um, all the goods down to our aluminum factory. So the difference here is instead of coming down here and feeding out that way, which I had before. I've now added these little buffer containers on this side of things, and they largely remain empty unless the trains arrive, then they stop, get backed up, and then they unleash back everything that they need to. Remember, we're just getting 600 per minute out of these. This one's obviously doing 780 per minute because it must have gotten backed up before, but this one's just doing a little bit less. Again, that's to do with the delivery system that we have. Don't worry about it. It should all work out just fine. Uh, but I just thought I would mention it. So that train is just gonna stop before getting in here. Let's just get out of its way and get moving. Whoa, you're not in the right place at all. <laughs> all right, so that's the factory walkthrough pretty much done. We're gonna pick up a lot of extra speed going downhill here and launch ourselves all the way down to the hub and start um, completing some of these milestones. Alrighty, basically in position. What the hell just happened to the music? The music's cutting in and out. What's happening? <laughs> Alright, let's get jumping. So we need to just basically get over there. Really should have just brought a car for this or something. Um, but yeah, we should have all the materials we need to do the first... I think I'm going to get the hover pack first. I think that's what I've got. And then we have to set up the manu a manufacturer to make our radio control units. And then I think I'm going to need coal, because I don't think I've got enough gas filters just yet. Alright, let's break out the zip line and just get our way back up here. Alrighty. Easy as that. Okay, so hover pack. It gives us actually extra inventory, which is awesome as well. Three more slots desperately needed. Hover pack, power consumption, 100 megawatts. So we've got everything we need. Let's just toss it all in. 200 motors, 100 heavy modular frames. We're going to have to build a factory for that because I'm really getting low on them. And it's taken longer and longer to kind of feed the machines to do it. Um, 100 computers and 200 alclad aluminum sheets. By the way, just really quickly before I click that button, aluminum is spelled A-L-U-M-I-N-U-M -M -M in this game. But in real life, it's I-U-M at the end, Alum aluminium. Now, I don't know if that's just like the European spelling or, or versus American or not, but people have been telling me I'm spelling aluminum wrong. I guess technically in game it's spelled like that, but, you know, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, I'm spelling it right. But I just thought I'd mention that. Clearly, there's two different spellings. You are correct. I'm technically spelling it wrong if it's called that in game for this game. Alright, let's see. Actually, before I build this thing, let's just get this manufacturer down because I know that I'm going to need radio control units. We've got five minutes to kill anyway, so... Oh, I'm out of cable. Damn it. Alright, let me just go run over and get some cable. And then we'll get started. Alright, all good. That thing needs fuel. Oh my god, there's problems everywhere. Well, actually, the reason that needs fuel is because we wanted to, I was waiting until I got drones to refuel things. That kind of makes sense. Um, so what was I doing? Oh yeah. Manufacturer. 
All right, so this manufacturer, we'll just slam it in here temporarily. We'll get radio control unit. Hmm, if we gave it circuits, we could do this as well. Yeah, we'll just do it this way. I've got 85 oscillators. I'll just throw them in, throw them in, overclock the crap out of it, and just power it on, and that'll make it in the background for us. And in fact, throw some casing in there. I've left some casing here because I knew I would need more. That's everything I've got, is it? I think so. There we go. Casing's been fed in now automatically because it's 100 per minute for that, whereas the other two are not going to run out anytime soon. All right, we're making radio control units. In fact, let me just see what they look like. Never seen them before. Always like to see the 3D model. Yep, that's a radio control unit if I've ever seen one. What was it made of again? Casing, oscillators, and computers. I was going to say where they get the cable from. Looks like it, it would have a cable on it. All right, uh, let's just toss that back in there. Okay, so let's check out this. I need to say, first of all, we've done that and we've done that, so that's done. Factory walkthrough and the hover pack has been unlocked. Autosave is just going to kick in. All good. All right, so do we have what we need? Yes, we do. We can make seven of them. A hover pack, eight motors, four heavy modular frames. Again, getting very th tight on those. Eight computers and 40 alclad aluminum sheets. Okay. All right, there we go. <laughs> it's as easy as that. We're hovering. All right. It's like we're just flying around. Uh, with the, um, what's it called? The, the mods that like let you fly or whatever. So I use mods to let me fly in order to get some cinematics sometimes in these episodes. But now I can just use this. Although my hands are in the way, I guess. Um, whereas if you just do it with the mod, you don't have hands in the way. It's kind of annoying that the hands are in the way, isn't it? <laughs> Wish you could get rid of them by pressing H. They actually take out your other thing then. Wonder, you can zip line and... So I guess how this works is on the bottom left, we have a radius of how close we are to poles. And the further we go from power poles, we lose power and then we just fall. So we have to be next to power poles. It's pretty close as well that you need to be. Now I wonder, if I was just to get a pole and drag it out, or am I missing iron rod and concrete? Damn it. Iron rods and concrete. All right, we can get both. What I'm curious is, I wonder does Mark II poles or Mark III poles give you further range? And uh, we've got those things in here. So concrete, I've got loads of behind me, but we'll just get some rods over here. All right. It's interesting coming back into, this is like the first factory really that I ever built. And then we've got concrete, 24,000 just loaded up here, another 24,000. I've never built more than just one concrete miner. People always say, like, get more limestone stuff. It's like, why? Like, why? <laughs> I don't need it yet. Maybe one day I will, but everything is made from this one. Except for, actually, I, I lie a little bit. There is a concrete miner in there to give us industrial beams in the steel foundries that we have. But everything I've built with, I've, I've just grabbed from here. Which is uh, remarkable. And if you're wondering how many hours do I have? 191 on this save. Alright, the pod has returned. So we can do the next thing actually pretty quickly. Don't know if we have our radio control units yet. We have 22. Uh, so yeah, let me just conduct my little test here. Because I'm curious to see how this works. So we have what we need to build another pole. So I'm just going to build a pole far away from any other pole. Right around here. And it has power. And then I'll re-equip the hover pack. So we can see that we're basically full power. Let's just fly over to, I don't know, out of range, right? So we're out of range right here. This is like the edge of the range. So if I was to upgrade that now to a power pole Mark II, would it give us more range? Let's try Mark III and just go straight up. No, it's no different. That's a bit of a shame. I feel like that'd be a great great way to encourage you to use these poles because there's really no need to, unless you just don't care about messiness, you know, feeding like 10 cables into one thing. There's really no need to use these. It'd be great if it gave you extra range and then it would be a bit more of a 
a thing I'd use a bit more. But anyway, whatever, not a big deal. Good to test, good to know. There we go, you can safely land if you're falling as well by holding space. Alright, cool. Nice. I think I'll still use the jetpack most of the time, but I guess while we're building that can be good to use. People did say like, oh, it never stays still for you, so it's a bit annoying to use, but... It doesn't move that much. It's... I think it's pretty much fine. You know? I don't know if they've changed it since people said that, but it's not moving that much. Um, I agree, it'd be nice to have a stabilizer, so you just... you literally just stop if you click, like, control or, or crouch or something. But it's pretty good otherwise. Anyway, alright, let's move on. So that's the hover pack. Hazmat suit is next. So for the hazmat suit, I needed 50 filters. And for more filters, I need fabric and coal. And how many of these do we have? 32. And is everything else good to go in here? Let's just make sure this is loaded up. It's more computers. Right, so I'm going to make a move to just quickly go over to my motor factory. I'm going to grab some coal, and then we'll head back. It's a lot of running around in this episode, but trust me, I just wanted a bit of a break from constantly building that we were doing the last three. So this one's a bit more exploration, a bit more playing around, having fun with the mechanics, seeing how things work. And it's not too far anyway. A couple jumps and then we'll run into this old factory and uh, get up to the foundry level and steal some of its coal. And this is our motor factory for those who haven't seen it before or don't remember it. One of the biggest, well, at the time, obviously the most complicated and intricate build I'd ever done. Really love the look of this building as well, the way it's all different staggered and everything. Um, but a lot of inefficiency, not in terms of its production, but just in terms of getting around it. Very inefficient, not really well planned out, I guess. Um, I like to think my builds have been getting better as time has gone by. Alright, so we're up here at the foundries. This takes in coal, mixes it with iron. I'm just going to steal this coal. Should be more than enough. Alright, good. That's all I needed. And we'll just get the hell out of here now. Oh yeah, I was on a stream not that long ago playing this game. Maybe a month ago now. I don't stream this game very often. And we were in there for some reason, and I was talking through it. And I realized, like, the numbers are actually off. Something's wrong with it. I, I don't know exactly what. And I just can't be bothered figuring that out now. Because at the time, and I watched parts of the episode back, and I'm like, yeah, this seems... I don't... I don't know what's wrong, but something is wrong in there for sure. <laughs> and it shouldn't be. But it could just be the case of, like, a... a a belt or something is um, not the appropriate length or size, you know, a speed, really. Alright, pretty much back now. We'll just hop up through the hypertube. All my um, heavy modular frames get made over there, by the way. I just manually feed that, in case you're ever wondering where do I get them from. And we have fabric here left over from a long time ago when I initially built the first oil refinery. I actually kept my polymer resin and my fabric in case I needed it. I guess I don't need polymer resin for anything, but the fabric we can use. So we'll just make, I think it was something like 12 more filters. So that shouldn't be take too long. Yeah, no time at all. All right, there's 50. So we'll go in here, hazmat suit, more inventory slots. Sweet, I did not know that. That's really good, actually. All right, so we need casing. Oh, crap. <laughs> Oh, good. We've still got some casing here. Hey, we got 50 as well. Nice. We're good to do both of these now. We'll just do this one first, I guess. So, hazmat suit. Bonk. Alright, an extra inventory as well now. So, let's see. Uranium-based... Radiation. So we need gas filters to give us iodine filters which fit into the hazmat suit. Alright, let's make the suit first. Guess we only need one. Shields pioneers from the adverse effects of radiation consume iodine infused filters from the inventory while worn in radioactive areas. Oh, right, yeah, it's on the body slot. Sweet. Cool. Oh, that's cool. So you can wear it as long... Oh, I thought you had to wear it instead of the gas mask. That's good that you can do both. Um, gas filters. Let's just make a couple extra of these, and then we can make the iodine-infused filters. Make 10 of them, maybe. So I'll make 20 gas filters, if I can. Okay. And then we'll make 10 of these. And now we've got 10 of each. 
So quick wire casing and the gas filters. All right, we've got 10 of each. So maybe later in the episode, we'll try to go into some, get close to uranium or something, or pick it up even and see if that kills us. I wonder, does it last for a certain amount of time? Let me read about it, does it say? Using the hazmat suit to absorb the particles. So I wonder if you get like heavy radiation, does it just take you, chunk down these things really quickly? Or is it more just like, you can last a minute in any kind of radiation, you know? I don't really know, I guess we'll find out. I would imagine the former, not the latter. Uh, so how much time do we have? Three minutes to go until we can then get our drones. And we're making more radio control units because I assume they're needed to either build drones or to make the drone building. Uh, I'm just going to take some casing in case I burn through too much. Oh yeah, and oscillators. Do we? I've still got 50. Okay, good. So, um, you might be wondering, what am I going to plan on doing after this? Well, first, we'll just select this as a milestone. We can't feed it just yet. Um, we're going to be doing... Obviously, to get to tier 8, we need nuclear power, so we need heavy modular frames. I do produce supercomputers, so that's fine. So I need a heavy modular frame factory, I feel like. This other stuff I've actually already got. Like, I've got the casing in the Alclad. We've got wire. We have... Ri oh, yeah. So what I'm going to be making is heavy modular frame factory, as well as a radio control unit factory, which needs an oscillator factory and an AI limiter factory. So we've got... And they don't have to be big. I'm not going to make them too big or crazy. So I don't know the amounts I'm going to need yet. But that seems like then we'll be able to do these two pretty easily. Those two seem pretty easy. But then after that, it's like this, which I don't know how you make fused modular frames, but I assume it's complicated. And then we get really serious electromagnetic control rods, cooling systems. There's like particle accelerators and stuff. So definitely this seems insane. This, I don't know. It doesn't seem too bad, though, because we do have the components for almost all of this. And then, obviously, to do the final stage of the um, space elevator, that that's really, like, properly finishing the game, right? So, here, we're going to get the assembly director system, which is project part six. It goes into the space elevator. So, I guess it depends also how complicated that is. We'll have a look at it in a moment once we unlock it. Then, we've got sulfuric acid, packaged sulfuric acid, batteries... I mean, yeah, we probably need a battery factory then as well. So what I plan on doing with drones is getting drones to deliver fuel to places and then using that fuel to get trucks to deliver things intermittently. So basically, over... If I turn on... Can I just turn on one resource? No? There we go. We have raw quartz over here that's not tapped yet, and I need that to get my aluminum factory up to full speed. In order to get this raw quartz over to here, where my other raw quartz is, I just want to drive it along a bridge or something similar. Um, but in order to have a truck, you know, the trucks that are out here, actually, I could do it without even using drones, because there's a truck that goes out here to these stations. If I could just make a route that leads over that way somehow, they would actually get refueled here already without actually having any other problems. But I think it's a more elegant solution to use drones to fill up fuel. Because they only carry something like 10 slots or something like that. They don't carry very much. So you, it's not really meant for tra um, transporting loads of material. I feel like it's more fuel or smaller things that you don't make in high abundance. Like maybe heavy modular frames or something. Um, so we'll see. I don't know. I'm just figuring it all out and talking out loud. Obviously, I don't look ahead too much in the game. So that seems to be what I'd like to do. It's interesting. I haven't even gone to near, you know most of these parts of the map. And what I'm sort of planning on doing is if I do manage to finish this game <laughs> in like by episode 50 or 55 or 60 or something, then I'll probably keep uploading Satisfactory, but I won't be doing it episodically. I'll just be doing it like, okay, now we're going to build this this factory and use all the components to do it. I'm um, just trying to make things more efficient and stuff. So it will be the end of the sort of Let's Play, more just the beginning of just randomly doing videos for it like other channels do. All right, here we are. So 300 motors, in you go. 200 casing, no problem. Alclad and the 50 radio control units we've just made. Aeronautical engineering ready for launch. Milestone reach. Aerial transport of resources is now possible with the use of drones, ideal for shipping across long distances or difficult. Yeah. Ensure the presence of batteries at drone ports. Ensure the presence of batteries at drone ports for optimal results. So it says also for shipping long distances or difficult terrain. I feel like that's really what it's for, right, as well? Difficult terrain. Like getting stuff in and around out of these weird areas might be helpful. 
And I gotta be honest, I don't even know what's up here. I, well, I vaguely do, but I don't know how complicated or messy it is, or how open it is. There's like another desert or something, and then there's the coastline that they improved, so we should also go up there at some point. Okay, well that's tier 7 done. We just did it, just like that. Tier 7 is done. So we are on to tier 8 now. Nuclear power. And I could do this milestone. <laughs> I could do it even right now. Potentially. So what do we need? Heavy modular frames? Let's get modular frames just working in the background in that manufacturer at the very least. Oh yeah, people say that actually handling this stuff is really difficult, isn't it? That might be... I might be oversimplifying how easy this is. <laughs> but, uh... Well, <laughs> we'll see. Oh, so the pod's not going to return for 14 minutes. So just really quickly, what I'm going to do is... Well, let's check. Transport drones. This, is, this takes heavy modular frames, actually. We need two of them. Okay, yeah. Let's just get some modular frames going. Forget nuclear power. Let's just at least make some frames in the background so that we can build these ports properly. So here's where I make them. There's lots of that. There's nothing in this one, and there's rubber there. So this needs screws. So just really quickly, what I'll do is throw down um, a little box. Oh, I can't even do that. I need iron sheets, and I don't have them. Okay, well, whatever. Oh, I know what. This has iron sheets in it, doesn't it? No. But we can store stuff in here anyway. So, the reason I want to store stuff is just free up space. I'm going to grab some screws, dump them in here, and this place will just be a little bit more... It'll make those things for a little longer then, basically. So this is my screw factory, which has been truncated since we upgraded its recipe. And it's not actually working right now because that other thing needed fuel and we don't have any fuel. So I'll have to fix that. All right, I'm up on top. So we've got two big storage things here. All right, that's me uh, pretty much full up. Jump back out here, throw screws into that box, and then this will just make some modular, heavy modular frames for me in the background, at least for a while. Okay. Alright, cool. And uh, might as well, just while I'm here, toss in the extra regular modular frames that I have. Okay. There's more over there, but we'll leave it for now. I think that's will keep us going for a while. So, let me just run over to this truck, give it some turbo fuel, and then that'll be good to keep going for a while. Not for very long, but at least just get it running again. Off you go. I'm like a little maintenance man today. Also, hazmat done, drones done. Now remember, I'm I'm doing this because we're waiting for some more heavy modular frames, so there's a few things we're going to do while we wait for that to be produced. Then we'll build two drone ports and see if we can connect them up with a drone and how it all works. Um, what's the other thing then? The other thing I need to do would be grab some extra turbo fuel and just load up this place with turbo fuel. And we make turbo fuel right over there, or at least deliver it over there, so we should be good. This thing is still full on screws, so this really haven't run out. It's totally fine. And uh, I might actually build a drone port on top of this place, because it is a transport hub. It's like where we, the meeting of lots of goods come together here, so it would make sense. Seems like a good place to do it. It'd be cool if you could fly a drone. I don't think you can. I've seen people stand on them before, though. Yeah, so just give me all of that. And I'll just take that over to the screw factory. And that'll be the last thing, the last little back and forth we have to do for a while. So that way, this this truck that just ran out, it'll just, you know, take the fuel from here and repair itself. and Or fuel itself and keep going. So this is the one. Alrighty, there you go. I'll just keep 100 for myself in case I need it for something. And that'll keep that moving. Alright, good. So, heavy modular frames. Let's just go grab any that we've made over there. And then we'll build two drone ports and see what happens. I haven't actually looked at what it takes to make a drone. So, I'm guessing radio control units or something. Alright, made 13. Not that much. We've got 39. 40. Okay, that's a good number. So, transport. Drone port takes 20, so we can build two of those. This does not take any, which is nice. Although it does take a portable miner, interestingly. Alright. 
While I'm down here, I'm gonna grab some iron sheets or iron plates. Sorry. There we go. I actually have storage right there for iron plates, 9,600, so just give me a few of those. Okay, and what do we have here? That, 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 that's all full. Lots of modular frames in here, that's fine. Alright, don't need anything else, let's just head upstairs. And we should be able to start building these things. Also got fuel for my jetpack in here. Alrighty, um, should I build it? Maybe I'll do it down there, where our testing area is. Or we could just do it over here, actually. There's so many packages everywhere. Yeah, let's just do it somewhere over here. Uh, in fact, we could use our jetpack now to fly. Sorry, our hover pack. There we go. Alright, bird's eye view. Uh, so I'm lacking the radio control unit, so I guess I'll just go get them. Thirty-six extra were made. Good. Throw in some a little bit more casing. All right, drone port. She's big enough. Uh, maybe let's give it some foundations just to start. Oof! That was a that was a big one. <laughs> All right. All right, we are foundationed up. The sun is now rising. I'm just going to make this look a little nicer anyway. Cool. Okay, so drone ports can have one other port assigned as their destination. Oh, so it's not like trains where you can go from... Okay, well, anyway, each drone port can contain a single drone, which transports available input back and forth. Oh, really? Oh, I thought you had, like, loads of these. I've seen people have, like, 20 drones. Didn't Let's... Doesn't, like, Let's Game It Out have, like, a 50 drones in a tornado or something in one of his videos? Does that mean he had 50 drone ports? I didn't know that you had to do that. Uh, yeah, let's just rotate it this way. Why not? There we go. It's cool that even while you hide your UI, you can see the battery level of the... the power level of the hover pack on my left hand. Uh, cool. Looks cool. It's actually a really cool building. The little ladder that goes up the middle and everything. So we got an input, an output, and another input. So this is for the batteries. Oh yeah, so speaking of batteries, they were left over here. Yeah. But, oh, 50. Yeah, I thought it was like 30-something. So we picked those up, and I've got mycelia in this. I've been meaning to do this for a bit. The mycelia tree. Done. Toxic cellular modification. Alright, we've now completed the mycelia tree. So now there's just the sulfur tree left to go, basically. And then we've done everything. Still need to find a lot more hard drives as well, actually. So we could do this now. We've got the casing, but we don't have the right amount of ammo with me. An ammo factory would be pretty cool to make as well. Lots of different things to do. Okay, so five minutes to go until that comes back. Uh, let me just drag out one of these poles here just so we have power to fly around a bit further. Cool. All right, so configure the drone port. Drone port one. Let's call this hub area. And it said one port per minute. So we'll put in a... Does it, oh, this needs to be powered as well, I guess. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. And then hub area. Hub drone port. This port, so it's destination and the relevant ports. I don't know what that means, all ports. Okay, I guess we're probably gonna need to build a second one. So what I'll do is build another one over there. Can I build another one right now? Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's make a drone. So I need a portable miner in order to do that. All right. Let's make two of those so we can make two drones. Although we only need one drone to go between them, I guess. I think? I <laughs> don't know. <laughs> it's kind of confusing if it's only going to do one per drone port. But anyway, a drone. So we can't build these out on the ground. They have to be built here. 
There we go. Looking good. Looking swanky. Now, let me read about the drones really quickly. So it says, batteries based on travel distance is the fuel. Oh, based on travel distance. Refuels at any of its connected ports. If available, nine slot inventory. Transport's available. What happens if it runs out? Does it fall out of the sky? <laughs> Um, transport available input back and forth between its home and destination port. Let me just turn off the, uh... Oh, I am moving a little bit. Really slightly. Oh, yeah. That is kind of annoying. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, yeah, let me just turn off the voice for picking up that thing. <laughs> I strongly advise you to shut the hell up. All right. Configure the drone port. Hub drone port, this port. So we need to build a second one to connect it to it, and then we can see about loading or unloading something. So just as a complete test, I'm just going to build a little storage container here, as this will be the collection. What the hell is wrong here? My... There we go. Sometimes it thinks I'm holding control when I'm not. Anyways, so that's that. So we're going to build another one of these and then hopefully hook them up together. Um, in fact, maybe I'll build a drone over on the other one and tell it to go here. I don't think it'll make much difference, but I'll just try that anyway. Let's just take this off or equip this one instead. We'll fly over to the transport hub, build a drone port on top of it, feed it up fuel, and then our fuel will be able to fly around the map, basically. That'll be the goal. I'll do that first drone test to see if it gets delivered over there correctly. Well, I'm not sure if I've got a way to get up on top of this, and it's just using a basic roof, but I might make a nice little drone port area in future, I guess. What are you carrying? Quick wire. Yeah, there's no way out, so I'll need another place that takes me up to the top. Um, just do this, and maybe I'll just build, like, a little ladder or something, so I'll just connect this out. I'll fix this a bit later, but it's just to get up on top right now, just to do something kind of quickly. I'll probably just make a floor, and then make some stairs and stuff that'll guide me up there. Alright, so, the fuel is down the far end, somewhere down here. And if I could actually just hook up a power pole, we can fly around with the hover pack here. That'd be nice. It says it takes 100 megawatts of power. That's kind of a lot for what it's doing. Alrighty, so there's the fuel. So if we grab this, drag out a power pole, I equip the hover pack. Alright, I'm good to go. There we go, just like that. Let's just destroy this light. No, oh, I'm full up, am I? Um, what don't I need? Some extra coal? I can go away. Alright, let's build some concrete foundations up here. That's gonna be a pain. I gotta really put down a box or something, otherwise that's gonna keep happening. Oh, I know what I can get rid of. Get rid of these packages. There we go. Alright, so, let's just clear a little bit more of the area here, of this roof, and then this could be where the drone port goes, and I'll build a staircase and stuff that leads up here later on. So, drone port. So, I suppose what I actually just really need to do quickly is see, how could I feed this up nicely? So, there's right there, one of these can come up and one can go down, and then maybe I could, yeah, that would actually work out pretty well. I think. Um, let me just see real quickly what's happening down below. They are both being fed into there. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Alright, let's go back up top. We can split one of these to come straight up. Rather than go down. So that can go away. That's gone. And that's after dropping a crate, of course. So let me just put down a little box that says store my extra items for a moment. Alright, I hate having crates left around the place, and they get left in such the most awkward places. All 
All right, we're all good. So, from here, put this back in place. We'll go with the floor hole just right there where it was, just to keep consistency. Fill this now leading up. So we'll need a floor hole somewhere there. I'll just stick it like this for now, and that way I can just tell. I'll grab this out this way. Cut in here. So the floor hole has to be put right around there on that spot. I think that'll do it. I'll just cut this away now for a second. Right, it's going to demand a rechanging and re architecturing of the the floor below here but at least for now that's where that's going to come in so let's just get our drone port and build that with that in mind so the input is over on that side so something like that and eventually this will need a place where we bring it batteries i wonder if we just get a drone to bring batteries around everywhere that seems like the best way to do it but i don't know all right in you go so then you can be connected with that and then this needs to be connected with its own power pole as well so there's a power pole right there it's going to temporarily drag that just straight up and then I'll hide it away later all right cool oh can't lose power careful does this building give me power actually this thing here oh yeah it does oh that's nice all right good uh, right, so it's going to be getting, or should be getting, fuel now. The only way we make sure of that is if we just hop back through here for a second. Oh, I'm a silly billy, am I? This doesn't make any sense. To bring this down. Alright, Mark V out of our minds as well. Yeah, so I think probably somewhere over here. There's no none of this space has been used. It's actually perfect. We can make a staircase and get upstairs. It'll take me just a little while to kind of get it right in the right position. Maybe I'll nudge this a bit further back or over a bit further that way just to leave some space to come up. But other than that, they're looking good. Right, we're filling it with turbo fuel now, which is totally fine. It's powered on. It needs its own drone. So let's go into transport, click drone, slam it in. We'll color it red just because it's doing turbo fuel. So crimson is the color I usually do. Maybe we'll do it trimmed with gold yeah looking nice looking swanky maybe even color this as well there we go didn't mean to take out the cup but you know oh i wanted to take a sip there we go all right just hide that for a second so uh configure the drone port so this is going to be transport transport hub one or a maybe just to make it look clearer this port. Destination. Hub drone port. 605 meters. So how do I get it to do it now? <laughs> so from this port A to hub drone port. Hub drone port to destination back here, right? And that's that. Plus one other port. It takes two minutes 13, it says. Have I done something wrong? I expect this thing to be taking off now. Or does it wait until it gets full? Because it says it carries nine. And I'm pretty sure I hooked it up right, right? Let's just go over it again. So, port name, transport hub, eh? Outgoing turbo fuel. Six... Oh, there's no batteries. <laughs> That's why. Got it. There we go. My bad. Batteries. All right. So, the batteries have powered it on. Oh, it's got a little eye. All right. We have liftoff. We are hovering. We're literally hovering. Oh 
Oh my god, and it's away. Whoa, this, the drop. So it's just flying straight out all the way over there. Now, do we need batteries over there in order to keep this functional? I don't know. Or does it use the battery to come back? I'm not too sure. I'm going to um, split these batteries. I'll just keep 26 in there. I'm hoping it comes back, but I don't know. So let me just disconnect this thing as well. There we go. All right, I'm gonna fly back over. I mean, it seems to be working. It's carrying fuel over there, and it should get. If if this is worked correctly, there'll be fuel in that box, and this drone will see it moving back the other direction. That's no drone. <laughs> it looks like it's just hovering right there, actually. So I'm guessing it will make the trip forward and back, but I, I don't know. Good just to test these things out for a noob like me. It looks to be just hovering. Oh no, it's it's in position. Yeah, maybe it does need a battery for both trips. Six batteries per trip? Is that really what it would take? That's crazy. So it is three over and three back. That's extreme, isn't it? That seems to be taking a lot. Just to go over there. <laughs> Alright, well it did it. And we're loading up. So it does work. <laughs> it does work. So, oh my god, what does this take to make? It uses aluminum solution? Why didn't anybody tell me this? <laughs> I had no idea that was going to be... I just built a whole aluminum factory with one specific thing in mind. Or two specific things in mind. Casing and sheets. And now I have to find out that it's not going to have enough. We don't have the aluminum solution to spare to make batteries. There's got to be an alternate um, recipe, right? I don't know why I'm looking at this. Uh, batteries. What are they made in? They must be. They're made in a blender. Actually, we've never built blenders. I need modular frames to do it. Can I take this down? Um, batteries. Okay, so it needs aluminum solution, 40 per minute. Aluminum casing, 20 per minute. Sulfuric acid. Now, acid... ...mixes sulfur, sulfur and water to make sulfuric acid. That's fine. That's a problem. The casing's totally fine. We've got 1,500 casing at the moment. But I wonder... Yeah, maybe I could change the... No, I don't know. I can look at the aluminum factory and see, like, maybe I could change a part of it and make batteries there instead. I think there's sulfur kind of up there, actually. There's sulfur here. And the aluminum factory's here. I could get a truck to deliver it, actually, over there. Hmm. Maybe. Or we could just... I mean, there's so much more bauxite. I mean, I guess there's no problem just making more. Yeah, I'll leave that factory the way it is. I think I'll use the other bits of bauxite. There's sulfur here, there's bauxite here, there's water all around. Makes sense to me that we'll make a battery factory somewhere up here. That seems like it'd be a good idea. And then we have drones operational that we can carry our fuel to remote parts of um, places where we want to have trucks. I don't even know where I'm going to need drones, to be honest. It just feels like it'd be a fun thing to kind of make, like try to make. And then we have a byproduct of water that we need to get rid of. So we can use that water to make the sulfuric acid, I guess. It needs 50 per minute sulfuric acid. And we make 50 per minute by just mixing five... Uh, sorry, yeah, five sulfur and 5,000 water. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. I think we'll make them. Oh, and how many batteries is that per minute then, I guess? 20 per minute. And for a trip, for that one standard, pretty close trip, by the way, it takes six batteries. And the trip was something like two minutes, wasn't it? It said something like two minutes, 20. So pretty short trip. Two minutes, 20, and it's six batteries. So we could sort of say that like one minute's three batteries-ish. Yeah. So if we're making 20 batteries per minute. Doesn't really give us much travel time, I feel like. I feel like you'd need to have a lot of batteries. Um, but okay, I, I think that's going to have to be pretty much it. I just wanted to test out the drones, get these various unlocks, have a bit more of a relaxed episode. Hopefully people didn't mind too much before we start building 
more complicated things. Next one. So the next one, we're going to do quartz um, crystal oscillators, as well as AI limiters and heavy modular frames. Now, the heavy modular frames that might leave, it might be just the oscillators first, and then the AI limiters. And that's going to be helping us make different things in the future. Because um, I've just been manually making the AI limiters. AI limiters are super easy, copper and quick wire. So, but see, a lot of these things that we need to make, we're sort of tapped for all our resources now. So what's going to have to happen in these future episodes is start gathering a lot more of these resources and starting again, or building things up. And power, not too sure, but I think power is getting a little tested. Uh, if I just hop down, we can see where we're at. Max consumption is 13,000 if everything's online and running. Max production is 9,600. So we, if we turned on every machine, we will easily trip our own power. So I might also have to just like spend some time and build like a new power facility on some more crude oil or something. So I'll have to have a think about it. I'll be able to read the comments after this episode. So if you've got ideas of what you'd like to see next and what I like, what you'd like to me, me to do next, people are talking about nuclear power. I think I'm just not quite fully there yet. Um, need to just set up the foundation similar to how I did for tier seven. You, you know, it takes a lot of building that foundation of power the base goods and then you can sort of build a big factory at the end of it and go like yeah everything's together now so we have to kind of repeat that process again right um, but we have a lot of complicated stuff in place though supercomputers regular computers circuit boards that's all good got loads of it got loads of plastic in abundance um, almost everything is in abundance I feel like even screws and loads of little things so yeah so the world is our oyster to decide what we want to do next I think crystal oscillators and AI limiters will it make us make a new invest into a new copper factory which I think would be good because I've been using that one the whole game so maybe we could uh, destroy it and rebuild it or find another place where there's copper and build up a big new one um, so yeah let me know what you think thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one hey guys thank you very much for watching and remember if you want to support the channel directly you can click the join button to become a channel member doing so will get your name in the credits as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments you'll also get exclusive access to my discord where there's dedicated channels for each series i'm doing and it's a great place just to meet others and make some friends